a lot of the massacres too are underwater, so especially up around the um, the Colburn and um, this place here as well. They they weird it up, and, and where it's weird, the waters expanded out and created a new basin. What's but, this place? Is this like a caravan park? Oh, this bit in here is, yeah. So they, they all come down here to the water. It's nice water and you know you can sort of tell why the mobbles are here around this area. It's just mm. And this is area. a massacre site? Yeah, like in, in, in the waterway there. So it's not actual on the edge. Same up around Colburn and that as well. It's all, all up around there, around like in actual underwater. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. un underwater. Yeah. So if it wasn't for this weir, the water, you know, the water edge be way over there, you know. And in, in these areas is where the massacres are. So how are they underwater? Um, so it used to be a river line, a creek line in here. And due to this weir being placed... Oh, they've the, taken the, the water the, the and redirected it. And the water's backed up and created this big lagoon. Yeah. You know, where, where the, the, the river line be up way in the middle there. Yeah. Now yep. it's expanded. Yeah. So normally water comes out here as well, like mm. it's sitting sitting pretty low. Yeah, and that's saying how it would cover the um, grave sites, eh? Yeah, all the grave sites like are un underneath that edge. water on the mm. river's edge. And now because yeah. the water's backed up, yeah. it's sitting on them. Yeah. Which is probably a good thing, isn't it? It, it is, because like, no one can interfere with it, you know. It's Just leaving it. Yeah, yeah. and the water's always flowing, so hopefully it's carried all the spirits and yeah. good energy. Stuff. But as you can see, you know, the high prized area here, you've got different ochres and stuff on, on the rocks there. Mm. So it's amazing like, that where people go now is where people have always gone. Yeah, yeah and that's right. And, but know, it's that, not acknowledged. That's yeah. sort of why, why them people actually went there, is because them old followers had a, had a good place there. Yeah, so you can see how, how big it's gotten compared to the, just the normal yeah, little so creek. It would have been just that old lagoon there or what? Mm. And now, now it's expanded out, and you can see out over this way, this is where they sort of, you know, the big areas was out here. Where people... Lived and, yeah, yeah. everything, you know. Well, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's one, a, it's one a, historian said when he'd seen us on the rivers, it was like a picnic lifestyle. Mm. Mm. He said we weren't like the um, Central Desert people because they had to wander a lot of places to get water. Whereas we basically lived with fresh water. We actually lived on water. Some of the beds was actual on canoes in the reeds so they could be safe. You know, mm. sleep in the reeds on a canoe bed. So they, they always say, like, around Victoria, that they were always bigger, bigger men. Yeah. Um, muscular, um, like six foot tall and muscular. So we didn't need food before they come, but once they took our hut and grounds, we... Sort of needed to food then. So all, all out over there, we're going to drive up over there in a minute, but that's all big sand sand edges mm. way over. And um, a lot of them was due to the to the big floods back in the day and creating them big sand dunes. And that's why they thought, you know, this area would be perfect for them to weir up. Mm. And, you know, it was a big, big burial spot for the mob as well. But you can so just this is a pretty sacred site. Yeah, but yeah. you've got places like this here, you know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> so well, it goes all the way up. We'll, we'll drive up, cross over it up here a bit further, but, you know, you can... You just, it's like you're looking at Barma Rip, at, at the Murray River in Barma and that, yeah. you know? Big, big supermarket there. Mm. It's beautiful. No yeah. wonder there's all these yeah, you can see Yeah, <laughs> you can see why they want to take up these places. But, you know, they, if they acknowledge the mob that's spread out around through here, you know, it could create a bit of education for them, tourism even. Yeah. You don't really want too much tourism, but, you, you know, you want it heard of too, though. Well, the people who come here to know. Yeah, and, and respect it, you mm. know. Because, like, you get a lot of people get up along edgeways of rivers and they're digging and making steps and things, but they could be impeding on, you know, burial grounds or anything. Mm. Yeah, so the riverways were really our important. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I reckon, yeah, for sure, because you know, if you got no water, you pretty can't much survive. yeah, you can't survive. And that's how you get food. Yeah. And, and see, we'd live mostly on the fish, and then when we'd want to change up, we'd go to the land and get a kangaroo or 
cost them more. Mm. Koala or and judging some of the mint and sorts, you know, majority of the the feeds were like fish and you know, all, all healthy protein and stuff. Looks like there's some long termers here. Yeah, they'll be all like from Melbourne, holiday homes and things like that. Same with around Lake Epilogue. We've got some mac massacres around there. And yeah. They've got the same same setup as this. Mm. Big weir, you know, the water's backed up, and then you've got all these caravans around. So here's this, the rest of that area that I was talking about. You can sort of see it in here. Oh, just hanging on, sorry. No, you're good. We've got all different bits of ochre. So all that white stuff here, that's all types of ochre. Mm. It's, a, it's a bit um, a crappy b version, but further around the lake, more you've got bigger pockets. Yeah. Just go and chunk it up, and you've got yellow, red, white, and that's how you do your ceremonies and things. Yeah. So right, right through here too, like, because we was on the other side, we was looking over to these, these bits. Yeah. Yeah. So this would have been tiny little creek, nowhere near as big as this. Hmm. When would they have built the weir? Eighteen nineties was the Golden River. Because there was a bit of a rush out here for gold. It says that there's harmful algae in the water. Well, a lot of them happen now due to these fellas building these weirs and backing up the water and making still water. Not flowing. Yeah. And you can sort of see it here, just sitting, mm. creating, a, creating still water. Yeah, it's not... And there's dead trees in there. Mm. Oh, so where the dead trees are... That's, that's the old bank lines yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So, like, a thousand years ago, you can see the edges up here, the river would have come up to these in, in big floods. Yep. But other than that... You can see the size of them stumps out there. Yeah. Them trees are, you know, two, three, four hundred years old. That so would have run around. Yeah. Yeah. And it would only come up every ten to fifteen years in big floods. So it's really quite changed the landscape, hasn't it? It's changed heaps. So it's a good thing in a way, but you know, as that wall is sitting there, it could be doing damage to the um, to the mitten sides, the, mm. the burials. Yeah, you don't it, know what's under there. Yeah, but it could be doing good things like the boomerang that got found up in um, Lake, Lake's entrance, mm. that dated back 2,000 years old. And it, it lasted that long in the water. Wow. Because, because of the mud and that. And if, if you take it out and dry it out now, probably just disintegrating to thin air. Yeah. So it's sitting up in the museum in a, in a tub of water. So it stays in oh. situ. Yeah. So that's the... Um the museum storage yeah, yeah, in the down, water. Down below, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's even amazing going down there, having a look at some of the stuff they got down there, like chest plates and things. Yeah. Pretty crazy. You can see out here, it's still going. Like this, this whole area was just rich, very, very rich. So it would have all been like that. Mm. Yeah, the weir was 1800s. 1800s. And you, and you look at the landscape where you get the bigger mounds. Yes. That, that's where you normally get a, a normal burial. And then when you find your remains that don't suit them areas, that's how you can sort of tell that they're massacres as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, this creek goes right, this river goes right along and joins up with the creek. And that's how they sort of branch their way around country. So you can see at flood times they would have come up around here, the water come up around here and would have had an island there. Mm. That, that, that's a potential burial there. Potem yeah. Potential, yeah, yeah right. potential. Only due to the sand and, and, and the way that the landscapes form. Yeah. They'd never bury people where the water would overflow it. Oh, I see. Or wash them out. Yeah. So the higher. Yeah, the higher eggs out of the flood. Like yeah. The flood. And that's, yep. what, that's how you sort of narrow out the massacre compared to a burial. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Knowing yeah. that they wouldn't have yeah. buried... Yeah, and, and in the massacres, the they sort of just leave them anywhere or they pile them there. They mm. don't actually go out their way to make them in a restful spot. Yeah. And then, like you were saying, how they were buried as well. Yeah. 